The typical day in the life of a rower starts early. That's first and foremost. We start it with a 5 a.m. wake up call and generally on the water about 6.15 in the morning. So it is an early day. Let's go one at a time. Just stay in your crew. Execute your workout. Don't turn this into a race. Just hold that course till you get near the shore and then straighten out. Okay, we'll just spin and we'll pick it up right from where you left off. Alright, look over here. So your blade should go in the water. Like it means business. The catch. All right, let's have all these crews, let's go. Catch, pull through, pause. The catch is the very top of the stroke. So it's catch placement, pull through, pause, let the boat slow down, do it again. So your oar comes and it's parallel to the water and the catch is when you put it in the water and you, grab, you get a lock on and then that's when you start really propelling the boat. Just one motion and then right to the water. Let's go again. That's hands, body slide, yes, that's it, and place. Place it with more authority. When you're catching the water. Kiana, that was the best one yet, good. Keep stretching, match that length of Andrea. It's a real long I'm trying to make sure the blade is locked right before the butt seat. starts to come back. Sometimes you just get a little, what we call, butt slippage. Awesome. Sure the the water. Water. So the catch is a, it, it seems really easy, oh you just put the oar in the water, but it can be a very challenging technical concept to get. And the catch is one of the trickiest parts about rowing. I actually was walking across the Diag. It was my sophomore year of college. I didn't row my freshman year. Actually I hadn't rowed prior at all in college. And I literally was grabbed, like physically grabbed on the diag and um, said, you have to row. And I was like, okay, I'm a, I'm a sophomore, I know nothing. And it was Jeanette Stosky, who was actually one of the uh, juniors, she ended up being a senior on the team, just because I was tall. And so I went to the meeting and Mark showed footage of the national team rowing at a world championships. And I was hooked, I was like, I want to do that. I think that looks really cool. So I started rowing and it's funny because I didn't, I didn't even remember this, but Mark was telling me, he's like, do you remember your first 500 meter test? 500 meters is probably, you know, a little less than two minutes. And I like, no, no, no clue. And he's like, it was really fast. And he's like, we knew you were going to be good. And I'm like, okay. So I went through and like, I, we rode our novice year and we had a really good novice year. And then um, I rode with the varsity in the summer, which was really good for me. And then my it would have been my senior year, but it's technically my third rowing year. We went varsity. So we'd gone from being a club sport where we had to pay to play to all of a sudden having scholarships and brand new boats and this beautiful new boathouse. It was so exciting. Um, and then so for those last two years, you know, we got to go to the NCAA championships. And I just kept falling more and more in love with the sport. I just I was so excited about it. And Mark was just such a great coach. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm still a part of the program, I don't know what, 14 years later or something like that. <laughs> At least it feels that way. And he was really encouraging. He's like, you should go for the national team because I was pulling the right scores and there was some interest in me. So I decided to go for it. And it ended up that I ended up making my first team in 2001 after graduating in 98. And um, as an alternate in 2002, we ended up winning the world championships 
in the eight and I was stroking that boat. And then unfortunately in 2003, I hurt my back so I didn't compete. And then I came back in 2004 and rode the pair at the Olympic games in Athens. So, and all the way through this, it's, I think a lot of it, a lot of, I do credit a lot of my success to this program because Mark did a really good job reading me as an athlete. And that's something I think he does really well and figuring out what I needed to succeed. And I think that actually, and I think it's something that Michigan as a whole does really well, is figuring out what their students or their athletes needs to really succeed and to really excel in the world. And that's like when I was out in the real world, Michigan grads were everywhere and it was wonderful. Um, so I, I, I do credit being a Michigan athlete and being at Michigan for me being able to make an Olympic team. Because I think if, if Mark and this program haven't, hadn't given me the tools, the toughness, the, the desire to want to do it, I wouldn't have made it. So it's really, it's nice now to be back home, so to speak. <laughs> Police, just be a little bit more um, consistent with the burial speed. The Michigan rowers are here first and foremost to be students. There's a reason we're called student athletes and not athlete students. We want them to focus on academics first. And so part of the deal with coming up here, and the girls were well aware of this as were the coaching staff, is there has to be built in time for academics. We can't let that slip just because we came you know, all the way up here to do rowing strokes. We need to make sure that we build in the, the time for the academics also. and. We've got a fantastic squad. Our team GPA is higher than the student body average at the University of Michigan. Like our team average is higher than the student bodies. And it's because the girls are, they take care of themselves. They don't need someone to hold their hand walking through the academic process. Uh, they're very smart people. Rowers in general are, you know, I'm gonna brag a little bit. They're very smart people. And they know what it takes to be successful at whatever they choose to do. And if they wanna be a student athlete at Michigan, you're gonna have to do what it takes to do that. And that's exactly what they're doing by balancing their schoolwork, studying for tests, writing papers, completing lab assignments, and then also being able to completely leave that by the wayside and head on onto the lake for two hours and just focus on rowing. It's a lot of time management and balance, um, yeah, but they're very good at it. They're very, very, very talented women who can conquer the world when they decide to do it. Go to the right when you get up there. So we're going to take a little turn to the right, guys, and let's come around to the right. Uh, 20 more really good strokes, 20 more really good strokes, and then way enough. Slow down to get out, get away for a day, for a while, just me and the sea, where the river's running. Gun a pond on the square, that'd be lovely. If you can do that, then you can have the rest of the day off. Good, that's it. Good job. Taylor's yeah, boat, you get the rest of the afternoon off, we want to get in. We're used to competing against other universities. We're used to competing within the Big Ten, against the Ivy Leagues, the Pac-10, SEC, ACC. That's our competition. And the varsity team will be rowing all eight on the feather, uh, probably around 22 to 24 strokes per minute. Um, and then we are gonna have the novice team probably rowing sixes on the feather um, and a little lower stroke rating.
Actually, the first thing that I look for in a rower is toughness. Because a 2,000 meter race, if you're rowing it right, is incredibly mentally and physically taxing. To the point where your body wants to stop and your mind has to force it to keep going. The third 500 of a 2,000 meter race is probably the hardest thing I've ever done. And if the person doesn't have that mental and physical toughness to be able to make it through the race, they can't be a good rower. I mean, there's just a lot that goes to being a rower. I think it takes mental toughness. It's really a, also a persona. Like, you know a rower when you see one. Um, you look at our team and there's just this sort of hungry look to them. There's always a hungry look in the eyes of a rower, at, that they just want to win, they want to compete, they want to work hard. And that you have to have that attitude to succeed. Because if you don't, this, this sport is hard work. It's a lot of fun, but it is a lot of hard work. So if you, if you aren't a person who's into like working hard, you're probably not going to be really good at it.
I like how fast you're I like going. how fast you seem like, go. yeah, you go pretty fast. Faster than I could seem. Yeah. Like, in the distance, it doesn't look like you're going very fast. Then when they go by you, it's really, like, fly by it's you. really cool. How many is there? The, uh, the Michigan fourth varsity eight is doing great. They're they're they passed everybody so far. Uh, the first eight is doing quite well. They've caught up to the second eight. Um, but I mean, these two boats are doing well. Third boats, I mean, actually, they're doing all right. And how far along are we in the car? About halfway. Okay. We think. <laughs> we don't really know. <laughs> Look how many there are in the boat. There, that's that's about that's it. It's about actually we're about a mile and a half, I'd say. Mile and a quarter. It's about two thousand feet. Trying to be more precise. <laughs> it's the first year. Next year we'll know. We'll have a course record.
this the, the two end? Oh well, you're in front of the crowd. Can we gesture first? I mean, why wouldn't you want to be here? <laughs> but this is a fantastic place. We're so happy to be up here. Um, my primary reason for wanting to come up here had nothing to do with rowing. It's a very selfish thing, but I think there's so many people on our team who are recruits from California, from New York, from Connecticut, uh, down south, who've never experienced Northern Michigan, and that's so sad. I mean, Ann Arbor is a fantastic place, but who wouldn't want to go up here? And it's it's a it's a beautiful place to be. My heart lies in the Northwoods. I've been a Northwoods girl my whole life, and I wanted to share that with everyone on the team. And I think it's a really great thing that so many people have the opportunity to do this. Because if it wasn't for rowing, they wouldn't be able to be up here. And you know, after that, yeah, we'll focus on rowing a little bit. No, it's amazing how just ever supportive everybody is. I mean, even, you know, we're like, you go out to the store, like I went out to the store and they were like, oh, you're part of that rowing team, right? And I'm like, yeah, they're like, go blue. And like, as we're rowing onto the bridge, go blue. It's just, you feel so much support and just excitement around us being here, which is really, I mean, it's great for the girls. It's also great for the coaches. I mean, it's nice. It's just nice for everybody to see how much support you can get because sometimes you know when you're in school or you know you're coaching you get lost in the rigmarole and here it sort of brings you back like oh yeah this is kind of exciting this is kind of amazing that we're doing this and and especially for the girls to feel it to have them be like oh my gosh you know people are excited about this it just gets them more into it so it's really all the way around it's just like a win-win for everybody
Alright, we bring it in down here, right with Lauren Snyder. 